this is going to be a whistle-stop tour of the massively increased risk of serious disease in South Asians, especially heart disease, stroke and diabetes. And by South Asians, I mean people from India, Pakistan, Bangladesh and Sri Lanka. While South Asians who live in these countries have a higher risk of dying younger than other ethnicities, this talk focuses on first, second and third generation immigrants, people like me whose risk is even higher. I'm going to split this talk into three parts. The main physical problems, which are going to be in part one and two, and then a snapshot of all the behavioural ones. So what's the deal? Why do we die younger? Insulin is a master hormone regulator. It's involved in loads of important jobs in our body, none more so than fuel partitioning, i.e. managing the food when we eat it. In short, it's an anabolic hormone, i.e. a growth hormone. It stores fat in our fat cells and glycogen glycogen or glucose chains in our liver and muscles. With a poor diet and poor lifestyle habits, our body becomes resistant to the effects of insulin. We actually need more of it to manage the food that we eat. This causes insulin to rise. When this happens, the body can't manage the things we eat as well, especially things like simple carbohydrates like junk food, but also things like rice, breads and noodles. And this results in things like prediabetes, diabetes, and abnormalities of our fat storage. This process underlies much of modern chronic disease and South Asians have a major predisposition to it. In a nutshell, they're twice as likely to get diabetes, three times more likely to get prediabetes, which is the warning symptom that you're insulin resistant, and they have less beta cell function, i.e. the cells that produce insulin don't work as well as in other ethnicities. In case you're wondering, both of these are strong risk factors for carbon cardiovascular disease, causing a total threefold increased risk. Insulin resistance also leads to something called metabolic syndrome. This is an abnormal metabolic profile defined by a few things. I'm thinking raised blood pressure, abnormal lipids, especially high triglycerides and low HDL or the good cholesterol, high fasting glucose and a raised abdominal circumference, i.e big belly. If you take away nothing from this talk and yourself, you should be asking yourself if you could have insulin resistance and metabolic syndrome. These are silent killers and they're the precursors not just for diabetes, but a slew of other diseases, including things like cancer, neurodegenerative diseases. If you can control and manage this, you add years to your life. One of the hallmarks of metabolic syndrome is an increased intra-abdominal fat, your spare tire around the midriff. It's it's what we measure when we measure your abdominal circumference. This measure is a proxy measure for fat in your organs. That's where fat shouldn't be. This is bad because this fat is active and it sends out loads of toxic signals that worsen the poor metabolic soup that we already discussed. And it literally clogs up the organs like the liver and pancreas and it prevents them from working normally. As it happens, the International Diabetes Federation have a separate definition of abdominal circumference for South Asians compared to all other ethnicities, it's much more stringent, aiming to capture this higher risk. What I mean by this is that you don't need to have an obvious spare tire to be at higher risk. A lot of South Asians look skinny, but have a massively increased risk. Having said that, many South Asians are more phenotypically or obviously overweight. We all know that this is strongly associated with many things, including cardiometabolic disorders. Again, globally, the South Asians are treated differently, and the World Health Organization and the American Diabetes Association have recommended lowering the BMI cutoff points for defining overweight status and obesity in just South Asians. What I mean by this is even when South Asians do look typically fatter, it's usually even worse than other ethnicities of a same degree of fatness. So the main markers we use to assess weight in South Asians, abdominal circumference and BMI, are both different for South Asians. That says a lot about how different South Asians are in terms of fat deposition, metabolic health and our predisposition to disease. One thing that has always surprised me from the literature is that South Asians 
Asians have a lower BMI, a lower body weight and lower waist circumference compared with all other ethnic groups except for the Chinese. This probably sounds like a good thing, right? But it's not because we know this isn't the whole story. South Asians tend to get fatter in a much different way to other ethnic groups, in a more harmful way in fact. This includes having higher levels of visceral fat or fat in the organs, higher levels of fat in our muscles and in the liver. This is the beginning of insulin resistance and less lean muscle mass than all other racial and ethnic minority groups. In fact, even with a lower BMI, South Asians have higher levels of metabolic syndrome than all other ethnic groups. So basically, even though we sometimes don't look too fat, all the fat is often in the wrong place and we still get sicker earlier. When you look at the standard lipid results of a South Asian, you tend to find three things. High triglycerides, this is bad. Low HDL or good cholesterol, that's also bad. And normal LDL. LDL is the so-called bad cholesterol and this is found to be neutral. Okay, so some good news at last, right? No, LDL is made up of two different types of fat, large fat molecules and small ones. It's actually these small ones that are implicated in heart disease. We don't routinely measure the different types of LDL in the UK, but it's these small, dense LDL particles that infiltrate our blood vessels and increase the risk of stroke and heart problems. And yep, you guessed it, although total LDL is neutral, the quantity of the small, dense LDL in South Asians, the genuinely bad cholesterol, is much more elevated. So why on earth do we have such terrible lipid levels? Probably because of a few things. Insulin resistance that I mentioned earlier, this causes excess fat deposition and abnormal cholesterol metabolism. Higher activity of a hormone called cholesterol ester transfer protein. This is about 30% higher than a matched European population and this is linked to an abnormal lipid profile. LP little a is an apolipoprotein similar to LDL cholesterol that's very highly genetically controlled. It's strongly linked to cardiovascular disease and it's found more frequently in the South Asian population. If you have a high LP little a found on a blood test, your risk of heart disease magnifies dramatically. About 10 to 12% of the population have this. And by the way, this is not a routine test that we do in the UK either. One of the main proxies for this is your family history. If you have a strong family history of cardiovascular problems with multiple relatives affected, especially when you're young, then your LP little a levels are likely to be elevated. Do tune into part two where I cover much more about the blood parameter anomalies in South Asians and the biggie cardiovascular disease. I'm thinking blood pressure, heart attacks, strokes. The statistics are mind boggling. Till then, take care of yourselves and stay healthy.